Nashville Motos. That wasn't a giveaway. We had Nashville right now. Aaron, you need to put your seatbelt on. It's a close track. So we're on our way to Nashville Motors to um, get a bike and get get the bike prepped for the track day and uh, we're gonna go get some gear as well so we're gonna be filming some content with regards to what appropriate gear is we'll we'll look at um, what the right gear is what preferable gear is for track days I know uh, not everybody has the same gear not everybody does track days all the time so depending on on your preference in riding um, we're gonna we're gonna help you make some make some calculated decisions on on what the proper riding gear is for um, for a track day and also everyday riding uh, if you're riding a super bike around around town or you're occasionally doing track days so we'll give you some more advice around that <laughs> We're at Nashville Motos in Nashville, just off of Whitebridge Road. Um, we're heading in to find a bike to ride for a trip. Yeah. I think I found the bike we're probably going to use for the track day. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think this. I think this is. Uh, this would be the perfect track day bike. Three ten might be a little bit too slow. I think I may need something with a little more speed. So probably the Ducati V four. I mean, it's got all the bells and whistles on it. It's got. Fancy electronics, it's got wings, Red Bull gives you wings. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored. Ducati gives you wings for downforce. <laughs> Anything I don't like about the wings, not good for wheeling. So be careful when wheeling with wings. Could have a positive or a negative effect on you. So, But uh, yeah, I think the Ducati V4 is definitely going to be the bike for the track day. So let's uh, go through some things that we want to talk about with regards to having it prepped and ready for a track day. Most importantly, you want, you want to go with new tires. New tires are definitely going to give you a lot more confidence for when you're out, out on track. One thing to be very careful of is when you are scrubbing in new tires, New tires generally tend to have like a waxy layer on top of them. So when you're pulling out a pit lane or if, even if you're pulling away from the dealership, yeah, one of the things to be very careful of is that waxy layer as you're leaving the, the dealership or if you're leaving pit lane. Make sure you get a good scrub on those tires and get that waxy layer off. You may feel a little bit of movement as you're either going down pit lane or through the first what, uh, two or three turns. It'll, it'll get rid of that waxy layer and you've got to build as much temperature in that tire. Building temperature in the, in, the, in the tire, if you don't have tire warmers, tire rotation on, on, on track, uh, acceleration and braking, not completely snatching the brake, but putting load into the tires front and rear and front will actually help to build some temperature in the tire. You want the temperature at an opt optimum operating temperature so that it becomes a lot more grippy. But also, once again, safety first. Make sure that you warm your tires up. Make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Making sure that 
everyone around you is, is up to the same speed, you're up to your optimum speed before you go ripping around the racetrack. You could actually order tires and tire warmers from Nashville Motors, Cascade Motor Portland, Cascade Motor Eugene, and any of one of our Orlando or Orlando, Daytona or, or Tampa stores. So uh, yeah, go to Motors America, look at all of our dealerships, and you could order tires from tires and tire warmers from any one of those stores, as, as well as a lot of the accessories that you're gonna need to go do a track day, like leathers, boots, gloves, helmets, and we'll go through that uh, grocery list of uh, items for you to be track day ready. Should our track day attendees run street tires or should they get the slick tires like you see the racers using? It all, it, so with regards to what tires to run at a track day, <clears throat> most of the tire manufacturers have um, various types of um, tires you can use for track days. Um, the compounds may vary just depending on how aggressive you are with, with the with doing a track day. So a lot of the times with most of the sport bikes that, that come that, that are on the market right now, um, they already come with a cut slick, and which is safe to ride with on the, on the everyday road, it, they're street legal, as well as the fact that you can see the contact patch, the contact patch that they have, um, between where the where the, the the cut treaded part of the tire is, is will it will um, absorb water uh, for light rain. I mean, it's, this this tire is not um, optimal for like dumping down rain. But I mean, if you if you were caught in a rainstorm on your way home, this will be plenty sufficient. Your contact patch at any given time is is only the width of a pretty much a width of a credit card. Some <laughs> some people have. This little that there's a little gap in between when you don't when guys don't lean the bike over far enough, they call that a chicken strip. Because um, when the, you're obviously not using the entire tire to the edge, I've never had that problem before. Side note: having that much contact patch gives you so much more grip. Because what happens with this part of the tire, you have movement. So with the break in the carcass, there is a little bit of movement in the tire which doesn't give you as much grip as a slick. Slicks are rec recommended for complete dry uh, track day or racing, but uh, these are plenty sufficient. I've seen guys turn some really good lap times, break lap records on tires just like that. Cool. All right, so now let's, uh, let's dress them out with gear that they're gonna need for the track day. Gear. Yeah. Head to toe. Head to toe. So head to toe, start with the head. Generally, for the man in the street, it boils down to preference. Not every, and there's a few things to consider. Not everybody's head is shaped the same. Um, we can go through a couple of different options. Uh, let's look at Shoei. So Shoei is a really good helmet. I've used just about every single helmet manufacturer in my racing career. Um, the cool thing about Shoei and the guys at Helmet House is they offer, they offer every customer a free custom fit. So you can actually have uh, your helmet custom fitted to your head shape. And we do have a video of a few of our guys having custom fits done to their already existing helmets. Of that so, exact one? Of that exact one, actually. Um, yeah, so, so, we, um, so one, of the, one of the cool things is you can take your helmet, or, or we normally have them at in, in store with, with the guys from Helmet House. So they will come in, measure your head, circumference, every nook and cranny of, the, of your helmet. And what they'll do is they'll customize the inside of your helmet the, the, with padding to give, it, to give you the perfect Leica glove fit uh, on your helmet. And I mean, showy, showy is, is more of a... Um, it's an average head size, so it, it's, it's a really good helmet that'll fit just about everybody. Yeah, they, they make best riders in the world where we're showy. Another one we have is AGV. Here we have an AGV. 
very, very nice helmet. Um, I have the Pista version of this. Also a very nice helmet. Very, it sits very different, differently on your head. This is one of the helmets that uh, Valentino Rossi uh, designed and produced along with Dainese. It's probably one of the more, more aerodynamic helmets when you're wearing a leather suit because as you can see with the design of this helmet, the arrow on the back of it actually fits pretty perfectly into the, we'll, we'll have a look at the, at the leather suits in, in a minute, but the arrow of this helmet actually fits pretty perfectly when you're hunched down, the arrow goes straight and runs pretty flush with the hump in the back of your, in your back of your suit. Very light helmet, very, very good. Money well spent. Cannot, you cannot put a price on your head, so always make sure you're wearing the best helmet and the best gear because you wanna prepare for any event that you're gonna have, have a crash. You'd rather have something of value that is gonna protect you 100% rather than having a $10 helmet that's gonna destroy your $10 head. Oh, Arai is another, another very good helmet. Um, it's a very, very good helmet. Top of the range, also one of the helmets that best in the world use. I've used this before. Difference with the Arai helmet is it has, some people don't like it, purely because for some reason the birth canal on the Arai helmet is is a lot smaller so so people generally tend to think that that the helmet won't fit them because when you trying to fit your cranium through the the birth canal of the, of the helmet it, it actually it's it's a really really tight fit but once you get it in it's uh pretty snug i pick up this way and now let's show them gauntlet gloves instead of street gloves gauntlet gloves what's gauntlet gloves I don't, I don't know these terms. Gauntlet gloves. What's gauntlet gloves? It must be an American thing. <laughs> it is an American thing. Street gloves. Oh. Oh. You... And those are called gauntlet, gauntlet gloves. It's definitely, GP gloves. Definitely an American gloves. thing. You obviously want to recommend the maximum protection. But you do have those days when, you know, it's a little hotter. You're not wearing as much riding gear and you want something that's more comfortable for a little bit of urban riding, you're not doing anything crazy. So these are, these are pretty cool gloves. They're pr very well ventilated in the, in the fingers and the knuckles and easy to run around with and you know, just easy to, easy to take on, on and off. Cool thing is they have a little um, pad on the end so you can operate your cell phone. You shouldn't be operating your cell phone when you're riding your motorcycle anyway. Um, but it has that option. Um, very, very well protected, nice, breathable. This definitely gives you maximum protection. It has a nice, pit, nice padding in the in the um, palm outside palm of your hand, um, and some really good grip. So these, this is one option when you're when you're doing some urban riding. But not Lance Isaac approved for track. Riding. Not definitely not approved for for track riding. What you do want for track riding is a nice full leather glove, um, preferably with some carbon knuckle protection. This one, this one is not as much a Trek glove. It's more of a, of a, a winter, winter riding glove. I'll show you, I'll show you um, a Trek riding option glove uh, in a minute. But these, these will work. These will work for, for Trek riding as well as nice casual uh, winter riding gloves if you're doing longer distances and all that kind of stuff. Actually covers, covers over, over the wrist, um, has some nice protection for, for, the, for the wrist and the top of your hand. Meta, metacarpals or metatarsals? One of those things. But we'll move on. Gauntlet gloves. <laughs> America. We're gonna do a video series of America. Okay, what are we doing next? Let's look at some leathers. So you have two types of leathers, and I'm not sure if we have both types here right now. So you have a one-piece suit and you have a two-piece suit. For track days, I would highly recommend that you, that you ride with a one-piece suit, and I'll, I'll bring this out real quick. This is, a, this is a typical example of a one-piece suit. So with a one-piece suit, other than the fact that it's a lot more aerodynamic in terms of 
it doesn't have as many layers and you know ridges in it you know to trap air and all that kind of stuff the one piece suit actually works really nicely because it's nice and form fitting elasticity in all the right places so when you when you're crouched over and you're leaning over on the bike it has that kind of elasticity for when you're moving you you need something that has sufficient movement from side to side when your arms are stretched out you got shoulder protection um, both sides these have uh, titanium caps on the end um, just to offer that extra bit of protection a really useful tool that mo that all the suit manufacturers are coming out with now i know um, revit has a fully airbagged suit so you can get these suits with uh, with airbags in them in the event of you crashing it has a 2D um, data system that it runs inside the suit. So it detects rotation, detects some of your heart rate. It has crash detection. So what happens when you do crash, if you're high side or low side, depending on the severity of the, of the crash, the, the airbag will deploy, protecting your uh, shoulders. The most common break is a, your collarbone, shoulder blades, ribs. So it will have all the protection in all the right places. So that's why when you see MotoGP riders most, most of the time when they've crashed, the suit is deployed and they end up walking around like uh, they've just stepped out of the Arnold Classic. So it's a very important piece of protection within, within the riding suit. They also now have developed a, an airbag for hip protection as well. So that kind of, uh, that kind of protection will, will later, very soon I should say, uh, trickle down to the, the consumer on the street. We do have a video of our CEO deploying an airbag <laughs> in one of our dealerships. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell uh, to get notifications of when that video will be uh, up and on our YouTube channel. We'll also, we'll also, we'll also, post, we'll also post on our socials uh, about it and uh, I'm being told it will be up next week. So, yeah. So, one more thing, knee sliders. When you do get to the point where you are dragging your knee, knee sliders are very, very important. Why do people drag their knee? It's not just for cool factor. Um, when you reach a certain level and you know what, how to utilize it properly, using the knee slider, you can actually get different compounds in knee sliders depending on, on how, how hard you go through them. Me, typically, I'm a shorter rider. I don't really go through knee sliders as much as, as uh, taller riders do. Um, I have a pretty decent feel for what's happening underneath me on between the wheels and on the chassis of the bike. A lot of riders use a lot of, lot of the, knee, the knee slider as a, as a traction device, actually to help them pivot and turn um, to get to get around the turn. Compounds of knee sliders and knee sliders are, are very important when you, when you get to a certain level. It's not just a, a bit of a measure for how far you're leaning over, but you can also get to the point where you have elbow sliders. Some riders have a very different riding style. It seems to be the, tr not, not a trend really, but it seems to be the way bikes and uh, riding styles have evolved now where you see in this day and age, you see a lot of riders dragging their elbow because tires have got better, bikes have got better. You can have more lean angle. Bikes, are, the bike agility is a lot better. So guys can lean over and get the bikes to stand up a little more uh, in the middle of the turn, using their body more as a, of a pendulum. So when they're leaning over, the bike can stand up more, and they can get the bike to turn tighter, sharper, and uh, drag their elbows on the ground. For track days, one-piece suit is definitely recommended. So two-piece suit, I guess, if you are gonna occasionally gonna be doing track days, a two-piece suit is fine. And, and I guess the benefit of having a two-piece suit is if you, if you are riding your sport bike around more on the street and you're not really doing as many track days, a two-piece suit is, is perfectly fine because you know if you are riding out with your friends and you go to a specific point or a restaurant or whatever, you can just take the unzip, take the jacket, of the jacket portion of the suit off and re-zip it up and, and attach it to the to the bottom half uh, when you get back and going riding again. Whereas with this, it's a struggle to get in and out of. And also when you're sitting down or you're at a restaurant or whatever, it's a little difficult to maneuver around and sit in a one-piece suit 
when you're just lazing about and not doing any riding. So this is a typical racing glove. And when I say racing glove, I'll show you why. Um, the protection that this glove actually offers is a lot more than most other gloves will, will offer in, in the sense that you have guinea pigs like myself who have tried and tested these, uh, these products out significantly and developed the, the levels of protection around these gloves on a regular basis. Um, this particular glove, uh, the Revit glove, is one glove, and I think I'll show you another set in a minute. Typically, the racing gloves have the last two digits attached to each other. And the reason for this is, in the event that you do crash or you go down, a typical motorcycle racer, you will see that he has a funny hand like that. And what tends to happen is, when you crash, your finger tends to get caught under the, under the handlebar or under the lever or whatever and ends up either breaking off or getting tries to get ripped off for whatever reason. The level of protection that you have on the gloves, on the knuckles, the fingertips. So here straight away you can see it has crash protection for, your, for part of your forearm where the leathers that you will wear will have some of the protection right on the, on the bottom there. But this particular glove offers you some great protection for the outside of your arm right there, the top of the hand. So another typical place to hurt yourself and break your hand is at the top, either landing or whatever like that. And then obviously the, f the top of the knuckles. The feel that you have on your fingers when you're either operating the clutch, getting feedback from the handlebars on the bike, that is very, very important because you want, to have, you want to be able to feel what's going on in terms of the feedback that you're getting from the bike, from the road, from the throttle, uh, and the bars. Let's keep going. We've got enough, we've got enough videotape. <laughs>